You know, you guys have really been wanting me to react to the electric versions of the C2 and the Vision. Now, I gotta be honest, I actually have not watched any of the videos for either of them, but I I know like the overview, I know what's changed and you know, blah, blah, blah. I, I know what's going on. We're gonna start off with the C2 because you know, yeah. So we're gonna head over to the Thomas website real quick. All right, uh, okay. Thomas Built Buses presents facts about fuels. What's your game plan for choosing a school bus engine? Watch him figure out a strategy that works for you. You know what? Okay, we will do that. What's the smart strategy in choosing your school bus engine? All bus fuels have become much cleaner over the years. Okay. Diesel is 90% cleaner than it was in 2006, okay. and based on EPA-regulated emissions, diesel is comparable or even cleaner than other fuel types. Okay, well then what's the point of this? In fact, diesel engines outperform all other engines in efficiency and fuel economy. Buses with diesel engines are also easier to resell. Diesel engines are built for the long haul. I thought this was supposed to be out about electric buses. And why is there a recommended for watermelon down over here? And can last 15 to 20 years or more. They almost never need to be replaced during the life of a school bus, which can significantly cut your costs. They're easier to maintain and can go up to 45,000 miles before needing oil and fuel filter changes. Oil changes 45,000 miles? My truck it requires one every 3,000 miles. Man, I need to switch over to diesel, I guess. Maybe that's why 93% of today's school buses run on diesel power. Okay. Clean, cost-effective, proven, innovative. Again, doesn't isn't that all supposed to be electric stuff? Diesel goes the distance. Learn more about how well diesel performs at thomasbuiltbuses.com slash facts about fuels. Well, that's where we're at. Holy crap, look at this. $36.96 for a watermelon. Oh my God. Okay, so not exactly sure why electric vehicles weren't in there, but you know, we'll, we'll read ahead. Did you know, based on EPA regulated emissions, diesel is comparable or even cleaner than other fuel types? Okay, compared to gas, diesel, natural gas, and propane. What bus is this even based off of? You think that they'd make it look like something of theirs, but okay. So we can see that, uh, oh, diesel outperforms. I was gonna say that diesel drives a lot faster than these other two. And what game is this? Is this like Candyland or something? Because I'd be willing to play a bus Candyland. Diesel emissions are 90% cleaner than they were in 2006. Yeah, we learned that fact earlier, actually. Cool. Okay. Thomas built buses exceed EPA and greenhouse gas standards for particulate matter and nitrogen oxide. And once again, this is going really fast. Oh, and carbon monoxide and non-methane hydrocarbon. Okay, 60 of today's Safety Liner C2 school buses produce fewer combined emission than one school bus from 2002. That's probably pretty accurate, something like that. Is this actually 61? Okay, that is 60 school buses right there. Can we get that in an emoji also? And if they're trying to make that look like the C2, the C2 wasn't around in 2002, just saying. Diesel has the lowest CO2 uh, footprint over the operational life of a school bus. Is this like Bigfoot's footprint or something? And then we got a little goat over here or something. Diesel is the most fuel efficient engine type. Diesel is cost effective. Diesel fuel, okay. Oh, look at this, okay. Diesel fuel outperforms in operating range and fuel economy. So basically what we're saying is that diesel will go 510 miles on a full tank CNG will go 450 miles, gas will go 270, and propane 264. The propane and gas seem really low. Like, I don't know how far I thought they would go, but those seem pretty low. Diesel buses have better resale value. The large diesel resale market doesn't exist for gasoline, propane, or CNG. I think it doesn't exist because those buses are still fairly new. They were introduced within, you know, the past couple of years so they really haven't had to be resold yet. 
When you look at all the factors, diesel buses offer the lowest total cost of ownership. Diesel engines are built for the long haul. Yeah, that, yeah, I, I agree with that. They are. They almost never need to be replaced during the life of a school bus, which can significantly cost cut to yours. Many alternative fuel engines aren't built for medium duty use or have to be upfitted, adding to the costs. Diesel is innovative with a long history of success. So in 1893, from the invention of the diesel engine all the way to the ultra-efficient Detroit DD5 and DD8 engine, Thomas built buses can thank its relationship with Daimler AG for many innovations. Daimler is the parent company of Mercedes-Benz, which launched the first diesel car in 1936. Today's diesel engines are so advanced they can go up to 45,000 miles before needing oil and fuel filter changes uh, with a little asterisk or either 18 months or 1500 hours whichever comes first. New diesel engines such as the Detroit DD5 and the DD8 come equipped with industry leading telematic systems not available anywhere else that measure engine diagnostics lowering maintenance costs and increasing uptime. I'm pretty sure you can find those in other places. More exciting diesel innovations are just over the horizon. Diesel goes the distance. He's going the distance. He's going for speed. Low emissions, best in class fuel efficiency, a low total cost of ownership, power, proven performance, and reliability. Look at it drive off into the distance over there. I was kind of expecting something about the electric C2. I, I didn't realize that we weren't going to be covering that here. So uh, that's 11 minutes wasted for me so some of these things like low emissions when they introduce an electric vehicle that has zero emissions you know shouldn't we be covering that and you know they've had diesel engines for quite some time it's not like this is all just a brand new thing like the electric one is okay we should probably go watch the video on the new c2 so let's go do that Actually, you know what? But first, I think I need a little bit of a makeover, just real quick. All right, you know, this this one is definitely not as comfortable as the other one, but, uh, you know, I think it seems appropriate, so... Okay, this is, like, actually pretty good cinematography already within the first six seconds. Already better than I see, so... The same incredible reliability. The same impressive efficiency. Well, yeah, well, I'll do a voiceover, because why the heck not? So as you can see, already right here, LED headlights. Much needed. Good. The same advanced safety features. Okay, so, so it looks a little, it, it certainly does look a little strange. Uh, I think this is something, once once we see the full picture, you know, I think then I'll be able to judge if I like it or not. What makes this bus different? Is what it doesn't have. I mean, honestly, that, that still looks like it has a bunch of stuff right there, so, you know, we're just missing one piece of it, but, you know, whatever. Introducing Jewel, the first generation electric bus. Okay, hold on, hold on. I think, let, let's take a look at this again. Okay. So, you know, it, it's pretty much, it, it's the same body. Uh, LED headlights, you know, I think that's something that I can grow onto. Now, it looks like right here, once it zooms in, I think that's actually a camera right there. You can't really see all that while there's not really a clear shot, but is that is that like a front-facing camera or something right there? It'd be interesting. Okay, come on, come on, man. Hey, this is based out of Texas. I, if you look right there, interesting. I 
man, this is this is wild, but this is like actually like a really good trailer, I gotta say. Lower maintenance and fuel costs. <laughs> Let's see, manufacturer in North Carolina, then why was it Texas spec? You know, whatever, so. Oh, oh, I get it. You, you, you see, because you don't hear electric buses because there's no engine, so it doesn't make any noise, so you never heard it coming. Right, yeah, no, okay. Okay, okay, let's look at that thing again. Okay, that, that's definitely something right there. Well, I guess we'll find out in the next video. Okay. Coming to a video. Okay, hold on, hold on. <laughs> let me let me edit in something right here. <laughs> This, this right here, friends, is how you make a good trailer. Okay, so here we have a clean front shot. I think I can do this. Yeah, I, I think I, I think I can, I think I can get along with this. I definitely like how, uh, you know, it's all LED, and I assume that's going to be standard. All right, let's see what the comments are, because you know this is going to be good. Oh, and uh, I'm pretty sure that me reacting to actually this video over here i think y'all went and watched that video and uh because i had a not so good reaction i think y'all posted about that and uh you know the comments are are now disabled for this video so uh let's let's not do that because <laughs> i i'm pretty sure that they were open before i posted that video so with the music in this ad, I was expecting the school bus to turn into a transformer robot and fight aliens. That's perfect. Of course it is. Okay, so this guy said, I wonder how many miles these buses drive uh, on an average day. Thomas replied, the jewel is best for in-town routes that don't exceed 100 mile ranges. Uh, what is the actual mileage? I wonder now because clearly it's under 100 miles. I want Tesla to make a bus. Hey, I have a video about that. Okay, so now that we've met the bus, I guess, let's actually take a look at it. We're here in Col- Man, why did we have to go from this super, super cool music to this? But, okay, whatever, whatever. Columbus, and we just unveiled at the National Association for People Transportation our first electric bus. Customers are really excited about it. We snuck up on our competition. They didn't see it coming. I'm pretty sure they did. I've had the pleasure to drive it. Super smooth. It's going to allow us to develop future electric vehicles. I am super excited to be here. Not just here at NAPT, but literally here, standing in the engine compartment of our Safety Liner C2. How can I stand in the engine compartment? Actually, you're not standing in the engine compartment. You're standing right next to the engine compartment, but because there is no engine. Why is there no engine? Because this is an electric vehicle. Introducing Julie, our safety line. This is Julie? Oh, oh crap, oh crap, I've been pronouncing it wrong, you know. I, I was thinking that, you know, it, it was like silent or whatever, but you know, and, and there's, there's, Thomas just has some weird names like the Vista, you know, you can pronounce it Vista, uh, the safety liner C2, I know some people call it the safety liner C2, you know, whatever, but okay. Julie, okay, so it's a she then, okay, okay. Liner C2, first production intent vehicle. One other thing that's missing from this safety liner C2 electric bus is the tailpipe. No engine, no need for a tailpipe. Okay. No emissions, no noise, all without sacrificing power. Okay, let's look up this license plate real quick just to see what it pulls up to. So, North Carolina MF3145. Show me the Carfax. Ooh, it doesn't look like that's a real license plate. So here we have our depth tank access door, which for electric vehicle is actually the charging port. Oh, you fooled me there. Okay, you said it was a DEF door, but it's not. Okay, okay. Okay, I, I, I think that that is a, a good little charging place right there. I think maybe something to also think about for the future is adding 
maybe you know one in the front and one in the back on the opposite side just so that there is two places that you can charge it so maybe you can plug it in both at the same time to get you know a faster charge or if it's not convenient to put it in this spot so that you can put it in the other spot so you know maybe that's something that we can see in the future so you'll see a standard J1772 charging port easily accessible for end of day charging so Julie comes with a unique feature to electric buses, and that is export power. Export power means that Julie is able to provide power source for external devices such as laptops or cell phones. <laughs> hold on, hold hold on. Let me let me let me open up the side of the bus. Let me plug in my phone charger, and then let me let me uh, charge my phone while I'm driving. In my truck, I have one of these external things in the back of my truck, and I will tell you, when I go out in the middle of nowhere, you, you know, camping or whatever, it is extremely useful to have one of these. Now, of course, you know, this bus isn't going to be going off-roading or whatever, so sitting at a band competition or a football game or, you know, something like that, these drivers are able to actually bring along their laptops and, uh, you know, use a full-sized outlook compared to just the, uh, the car charger, so... That's good. You'll see a traditional 120 volt AC power system, just like you find in a house. You also see USB ports here. Now, I don't know how many of you guys are actually gonna stick along with this, but I wonder if they have any USB-Cs in there. Let me show you what they are real quick. So these right here, this is your normal USB-A. So this is what, uh, you know, you see pretty much everywhere. These are now the older style USBs. I don't have a I don't have a USB B handy, but uh, these are USB C's. They kind of look like lightning cables, but basically both ends are USB C's, and they are being implemented a lot more. So the Macs have them. A lot of cell phones have them. I actually have one right there. They're reversible. They're a lot they're a lot faster to transfer data and charge and stuff like that. And I think that especially with these newer buses that we would want to start implementing USB-C's compared to USB-A's. Of course, USB-A's um, are still going to be relevant for quite some time, but I think we also need to start implementing the newer technologies such as USB-C. This particular system is 2 kilowatts continuous, 3 kilowatts peak, but it can be expanded to go beyond this and have enough power to even power a neighborhood. A neighborhood okay I want to know how big this neighborhood is and how much power these people are using because that is pretty crazy like if that can power like a neighborhood the size of the neighborhood I'm in props to you if you can actually do that in the safety okay uh, different dashes we can see uh, there's no real tachometer mainly because <laughs> there's no engine but now we have a fuel gauge I guess so we have the speedometer over here and we have a big fuel gauge over here well charge gauge i guess but you know what i mean the line of seat to electric vehicle you'll notice a different driver information cluster because we don't have an engine you no longer need to see rpms instead what you see is the state of charge of your batteries this project would not have been possible without the support of daimler and dtna and the future of sustainability is not somewhere out in the distant future. It's happening now at Thomas Built Buses. Okay, so we definitely have an interesting product here and something that I am definitely looking forward to. As you guys know, or at least I hope you know, I'm a huge C2 fan and I am uh, excited to see finally something new uh, being implemented in the C2s that's... Uh, not revolutionary, but you know, kind of just something fresh. So I'm definitely interested to see where this goes. Already I'm liking this a lot more than the charge, but that's not saying much. As time goes on, I'll probably do another video on like uh, electric buses in general, and also be on the lookout for the Bluebird Vision electric vehicle reaction. Yeah, guys, so I guess that's pretty much it. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you let me know what your thoughts are down below. I'm sure most of you guys have seen it uh, at this point already, but uh, if you haven't, then uh, let me know what you think. Let me know what you think either way. I'm interested in hearing it. So, yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, like I said, that's pretty much it. Uh, make sure you subscribe right down here. It's a magical red button that says you are now subscribed to Safety Liner C2. 
make sure you comment up here down here over here or over here i don't know where they put it down here they put it make sure you also give this video a thumbs up or i'm also going to pronounce your name wrong and make sure you also share this video with a friend show it to your mom share it to your dad show it to a guy on a random street i don't care don't get raped so yeah guys that is pretty much it and thanks for watching